guys, welcome to the Oracle of Lilith. My name's Amy and I'm so glad to have you. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm doing a pick a card all about your Kashic records. We're gonna have your future self step forward and give you an urgent message for you that you need to hear at this time. So keep in mind this is a general reading, it's a general session. Take what resonates and leave the rest behind. I do offer personal and private readings and sessions. All that information is down in my description box below. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, hello, it's so good to have you. I hope you will find value in this video and consider subscribing to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber. Hey guys, what's up my tribe? It's always good to connect with you and I truly appreciate your time and energy that you invest in my channel and in me. So it's an honor to read for you today. Now I will insert a little video like I always do with some backing music where you can take a moment and kind of vibe out with these cards and see which one or which ones you're drawn to. I have also received a channeled message or affirmation for you guys and I will include that in that little video uh, section right there. So with that said, let's just go ahead and briefly get into each card. These cards are from the Geometric Activation deck. It's one of my oldest decks that I own and uh, it's a very powerful deck. If you're looking for a deck, I highly recommend this deck. It's really great for energetic healing and uh, expansion of consciousness. So with that said, let's go into the first card here. We have the Cosmic Flower. That's going to be group one. Group two, you are the magical group. And group three, you are the miraculous group. So with that said, I will see you beautiful, magical creatures on the other side. Bye guys. Hey guys, so I'm gonna read the channeled message for you. It, it's an affirmation slash channeled message. So just take what resonates here and leave the rest behind, okay? All right. I exist outside of space and time. I am the expansion of consciousness beyond my own humanity. In this now, I have access to everyone and everything I have ever experienced within and outside of my own known consciousness. I expand my awareness by acknowledging the sacred truth of the divine consciousness that expresses truth through my human vessel. I am absolute consciousness expressing itself through a highly advanced biological suit.
Hello, group one. All of you that have selected. Okay, let's do it again. Hello, group one. All of you that selected this lovely card, the Cosmic Flower, number 18. This is going to be your reading, your session, all about a message from your future self. We're going to be looking at your Akashic Records. So I want to read this card to you so you can kind of take in the frequency of this session. The frequency of Cosmic Flower activates our remembrance of the place we call home the core from which we pour our magnificence out into the world. Beautiful energy. I just kind of want you to vibe with that card for a minute. Do you feel the frequency? I feel like a lot of you guys are longing for a feeling of home, a place to call home. And within this card, there is powerful energy blooming for you. And your future self is coming forward to discuss this with you. So, excuse my lisp here. I'll be through it pretty soon. Okay, so we're going to start off first with the Akashic Tarot deck. I have used this throughout my channel for past life readings and multi-dimensional type readings. And that's what this reading is. It's a multi-dimensional reading. We're going to be starting with your energy now. We're going to see where you're going. We're going to see the message from your future self, and we're going to see what else comes forward for you, okay? All right. Tell me about group one. Where is group one at right now? Where is this cosmic flower at? You have a beautiful energy. It's just absolutely beautiful. You are a beautiful soul. You really are, um, and I don't think you give yourself enough credit, and I feel really sad right now. Uh, the master artisan, you are so talented. You are so, so talented, and uh, it's time that you recognize your own talent and your own abilities. We have reflection. Yeah, taking a good, hard look in that mirror, aren't you? It's hard, isn't it? It's, this isn't an easy work. This is work that comes from uh, years of dedication to knowing. And I feel like for you, it may not be years in this lifetime, but it was years in previous lifetimes. Your future self's coming forward. You are full of more wisdom than you believe. You are aware of more things going on around you than you want to admit. There's an element of denial of your true self here. There's an area of denial within your soul complex where you will not recognize you will not recognize how magnificent your energy is. And uh, because of that, you're stalling out this blooming season where you come forward into your power. Listen, it's not shameful to walk into your power and acknowledge the truth of yourself. It's okay to say you're wonderful. It's okay to say you're awesome. It's okay to say you're magnificent. Okay? All right, I'm getting really tongue-tied with this energy. We have faded meeting. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm feeling like warm vibes with this card. Uh, intricacies and industry. Okay, so I feel like, you know, with this card for you right now, I'm feeling like you're in this energy of working, getting your, your life together with work. You may be changing jobs or having some issues at your job and it's causing to you to reflect on your life if you're not going through this now you will be and there's an important someone that's coming forward with and they're within your energy right now it doesn't mean you know them but you have attracted them to you and who has attracted them the master artisan um i feel like in many ways your art your art is your life. Your work of art is your life. I feel your future self. I think they're trying to come in and speak through me. And um, you may be having a hard time dealing with your the reality of your talent. Okay? I feel you are very talented. You are very talented. Okay? And I feel your, your, your future self coming forward. You are very talented. And it's time that you look in the mirror and accept the truth of you. You are wondrous. You have, in many different lifetimes, on many different levels, you have reached a level of mastery within a skill, ability. Uh, for some of you guys, it was psychic ability. For others, you were a master artisan literally. Um, and I'm feeling and I'm seeing sculpture around you. I'm seeing working with your hands. I see these hands and they're masculine hands. They have been working stone, metal, wood. Um, they've been working in um, 
earth material. Uh, you are an earth mover, an earth builder. You may have past lives where you were an architect of great monuments. I'm seeing a pyramid. I'm seeing several pyramids. I'm seeing that you were a generator of the pyramid system on the planet. We're going into an, a higher dimensional self now. Um, and you helped teach humanity about how to build these massive structures. Uh, and uh, sometimes this is what was done through channeling. Sometimes this was done through literally incarnations. Uh, you have a brilliant mind, brilliant mind. And I feel like for some of you, you guys don't think about math the way other people do. You don't think about scientific theory the way other people do because you understand science is the human explanation for the magic that is the cosmos. And the cosmos is very much a mathematical being. Um, and I feel like for you, because you have such a powerful mental space, a lot of times in this lifetime, you stifle your creative flow. You stifle those things that you wish to experience and wish to elevate yourself to. We have this very important faded meeting. I feel the energy coming from these cards, okay? Uh, this feels like a certain time, a certain moment, it's like you are going to know this person. Um, you're going to know them to the core. You're going to feel almost like a, um, I'm feeling like a genetic tie. Uh, that doesn't mean family. What I'm feeling is like there is a human memory. There's a memory of a lifetime that will come forward. You will feel compelled to listen to this person. This person will feel compelled to listen to you. For some of you guys, this may be a teacher, um, a guide that comes forward. And let me tell you something. There's this very special group of teachers, guides, spiritual leaders, uh, scientists, whatever, whatever this is for you, uh, that come forward. And they are guides and teachers and healers to the teachers, okay? Even great masters have spiritual leaders and teachers that help us through the human experience because we all have these internal vortices within ourselves, these internal universes, and they work very individually here on the planet. And that's a very special kind of experience of being human. And what helps us understand our own internal universe is the reflection of another. And that's what I'm feeling here. I'm feeling like this is something that's happening. You may have met them, you may be attracting them, but I feel like most of you don't know who this is yet, but they're in your energy and they're attracted to this master artisan energy and this period of reflection that many of you guys, if you're not in right now, you're entering into that. Okay, let's move forward and get some more cards from the Akashic Tarot. Tell me more about this beautiful group, this cosmic flower. Okay. We have the last few cards that I'm going to pull from the Akashic Tarot. They all came out at once. Okay. We have the Akashic Library. Okay. You're moving into an element within your life where you're going to be accessing past lives through skills and abilities. Uh, and what you're drawn to right now, what you're thinking of. Some of you guys are thinking of a skill or ability that you have, you want to work on, you want to develop. There is a... There, very powerful, multidimensional, and past life to pull from. Your future self is telling you, you are successful, okay? This is going to bloom for you. This is going to help you blossom. This experience is going to open you up. I'm seeing a new house. You guys, many of you guys are maybe wanting to move. You want a new house. I see somebody looking out a window. The room is white, looking into a neighborhood. I see children playing outside. I see cars in the driveway. Some of you guys may be dreaming about having a family um, or wanting to move your family, wanting to protect your family. And for some of you guys, you may be warring with yourself about the skill or ability because you are afraid that it, if you act upon it, if you go into it too deeply, that somehow it's going to take away from what you've already accomplished or already gathered for your family or for yourself. And uh, you don't want to interfere with that. That is a fear that's based in falsehood. When you walk into the truth of who you are, miracles happen. And uh, for you, I'm getting, I haven't done the miracle 
one yet, but the miracle uh, group may be for you. If you're pulled for that, to that, that, this is a sign for you to listen to that one as well. Um, I feel like in many ways this beautiful cosmic flower is blocking. They're blocking themselves um, and they're not listening to their higher self. I feel like your higher self is trying to um, help you remember. You will feel at home in your life. You will feel more um, relaxed and happy and in flow when you honor the skill or ability, okay? You don't have to choose livelihood or the skill. You can do both at the same time. Now, will it take effort from you? Absolutely. This is going to take effort because you're going to have to go through the process of remembrance. And how are you going to remember? By doing. You have to do it. Some of you guys were musicians. You played the uh, sitar um, and you were well known among the royal houses. I feel like this is in um, India, Asia. Um, I'm feeling like uh, there's some medieval energy here as well. Also, you may have been a well-known artist within that time period that also played the sitar or you listened to someone play it while you created these magnificent works of art. I'm seeing sculpture, okay? But now I'm seeing like tapestry, uh, mosaic as well. Um, and for many of you, there's something about the area of the Aegean Sea. You need to look into that. If you're pulled to any culture around that area, I feel like that is a multi-dimensional time point for you to access this uh, master artisan vibe, okay? We have the karmic trench. Okay, that is a lot of what you're, you're battling, you're warring on. You are, uh, this karmic trench feels like it's self-sabotaging. It may be something to do with your own generations. And it's time for you to allow yourself to be happy. It's time for you to experience the truth of yourself and walk in fullness of it. If you want to get out of the density you are in right now, you're going to have to lean into your skills and abilities. Okay? Some of you guys were writers. Uh, you were scribes. You were translators for oracles. Many times in, ancient, in the ancient world, oracles didn't write their own translations. Uh, uh, because they they got into altered states and a lot of them really lost all sense of humanness, okay? And so the uh, scribes were there to translate it. Now, I feel like this block has to do with a past life where uh, you were warned, told, commanded to uh, transcribe these oracles in a political sense to mold the populace. Also, works of art. It feels like they were very contained under a religious dogma and you weren't allowed uh, artistic freedom. And I feel like because of that, you're having a hard time walking in to your, uh, your mastery of the skill, ability, gift, whatever this is, because there is a deep-seated fear, a karmic fear, that it will be used to control you, it will be used to control others, and because in the past it has. But understand, in this lifetime, you are ascending that timeline, okay? Your future self wants you to know you will ascend this karmic energy, okay? And the first way you do that is go to the area you fear. I feel like there is some energy that's been guiding you towards a particular thing. This could be an art form. This could be a famous sculpture or artist. It could be a kind of music. Uh, this It's very different. I'm feeling a lot of different things here. It could be a culture. For many of you, this is a culture that it may be that in this current lifetime, because of religious dogma, you have kept yourself from experiencing. Okay, and I'm feeling like uh, your higher self, your future self is saying you need to release the karma of this programming, okay? Because you are a consciousness explorer and you express that through your artistic self, okay? We have the five keys, wishes fulfilled. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, you don't need to worry about this. You know, things are going to be okay. You're going to be fine. You're going to be more than okay. You're going to be happy. Maybe truly happy and fulfilled for the first time in your life. Okay, I'm feeling the future self coming forward and saying, you know, I'm happy, I'm fulfilled. You know, our family is good. Our relationships is good. This faded meeting for many of you, this is going to be new love, a lover, a partner, a marriage partner, someone who's profound. It could be a friendship that blossoms into a deeper connection. This is a soulful connection 
This is someone who will help you feel very confident and valid in your abilities, which will help you go further and pass this karmic trench here. Uh, you're going to be able to get control of that need to kind of control it. It's almost like the control and repression that was brought against you in this lifetime has been brought forward into this lifetime for you to overcome so that you can once again walk in the magnificence of your ability and truth okay uh, i'm not saying this is easy this is tough when you're in this trench it hurts it's painful there's a lot of self-denial to please other people there's a lot of fulfilling the programs that we've been given and uh, it takes a very strong sense of self to halt it's almost like what i'm seeing here is you stop digging in the trench you stop digging in the trench and what happens is when you stop digging energetically the trench fills it fills and the ground is healed the foundation of yourself is healed i feel like you guys may have some energy within your root chakra that needs some healing we have the ascent this is where you're heading okay your future self wants you to know that you're going to be ascending this energy this energy that keeps you in this mind frame where you cannot be that which you want and wish to be know that what you want and wish to be what you want and wish to experience is meant for you that's why you feel driven to do it and that's why you are resisting it so much because on the other side of this is absolute incredible amounts of power strength confidence and happiness but in this lifetime you are called to overcome the repression and restriction that is keeping you from walking into your truth okay and we have clearing the way yes you are clearing this past karma Okay, for many of you, you've grown up into a family where your abilities have not been appreciated. Maybe you were an artist and your uh, family pointed you towards more logical things because you ha you're very intelligent, okay, and uh, they felt that your artistic expression was not as valid or had as much value as your, your logical, powerful intelligence. And the truth is, they don't understand that they work together, and on some level, they have encouraged you to segment that part of yourself away from your intelligence so uh, they're the kind of people who believe that artists are out here in the kooky kooky crazy land okay that's what I'm feeling I'm literally here in kooky crazy land and over here is logic where reason intelligence order what you have is chaos and order within you and as you merge the two, as you understand that intelligence alone is not valuable without heart. And heart alone without intelligence and order doesn't make sense. So you have to bring them together. You're doing that. You're working on that. You're clearing the way through that. This is a very powerful group, okay? Because when you bloom, your blossom isn't like a regular flower. Your blossom is energetic, okay? There's an energetic, just, I feel this energy of just... A energetic flower bursting from your heart chakra just literally bursting into light this energy is available for you now okay but you must claim it this energy will not be forced upon you nothing in the universe is forced upon us like this we grow and we walk into the truth of ourselves because we declare it to be so and I feel your future self coming forward saying it's time for you to declare your sovereignty her sovereignty and to declare your truth that you are gifted you are intelligent and you have a lot you have massive amounts of energy to offer to the planet you already have and many of you guys if you are guided to a particular artist you need to look into that and that means writer music uh, sculpture it means architecture it means design of any kind you need to look into that um, and I'm seeing the uh, well well I'm gonna butcher this okay so there is a device uh, and I believe they found it in the Mediterranean and it is an art Oh, man, I can't remember it. It is a device. I'm not even going to try to say it. It starts with an A. And it has a lot of gears in it and a lot of uh, different levers and things like that. And it's from the ancient world. And many people wonder what it's for and how it was built. I think on some level, some of you, this won't resonate for all of you, 
know what that is. And if I can remember, um, well, I have to edit this. So I will try to insert a photograph or something about it so you can look more into it. This is someone who was very creative, yet very logical, very smart. And a lot of the ancients knew things. Their intelligence worked on an intuitive level. It wasn't so much as going to school and learning it. It was more like they intuitively went where they were guided. And what happened is they discovered many things that worked, many things that brought order to the world and understanding to the world. But for many people back in the ancient days that were very intelligent and did all these wondrous things, they did it by going towards what they were curious about. Okay? All right. Let's get into some more energy here. Let's keep going. I'm being guided to pull more from the geometric tarot. For It's not geometric tarot. It's the geometric activations deck. Okay, tell me more about group one. What else does group one need to know, future self? Okay, I'm feeling urgency. Like, you need to work on this, okay? You can't live in denial of this forever. This is why you're here. And as you take your time, just know that, <laughs> and it's ironic, really, uh, the more time you take, the stronger and more profound that moment's going to get. So you have been building energy to this, but it's not okay to live in denial, okay? It's not okay to let other people decide who you are, all right? And it's time for you to work through the karmic trench. It's time for you to understand who you really are. See beyond the borders of your own humanity, okay? All right, we have universal love, okay? You need to do this out of love for yourself, okay? You are special, you are unique, and the planet needs you to wake up. The planet needs you to walk into the empowerment of self. You need to not do it for the world, though. You need to do it for you and for your own generations. You need to understand that the future self that's presenting right now is happy, successful, safe, uh, fulfilled, uh, experiencing the joy in life. And you may be the kind of person who have experienced a lot of depression and a lot of, um, well, anger turned internally many times manifests as depression. So as a young person, if you were denied the right to express yourself in creative ways, you may feel angry about that. You may feel angry about the blocks that were put upon you by religious programming, society programming, parental programming. And instead of rebelling in a productive way, you have rebelled within your own soul. And it has caused you to have this mechanism that activates of self-sabotage. And it's time for you to allow yourself to creatively rebel from this energy outwardly. You need to start doing your art more. If you're an artist, you need to start writing more, making music, whatever this is, you need to do it. If you're psychic, and this is a gift we're talking about, if you're psychic, you have used your psychic abilities to create art in the world. I feel very strongly this is an artistic group. You have a lot of artistic flow because the cosmic flower is a physical manifestation, okay? It's a flower. So energetically, it appears energetically first. So you're going to experience this energetically, but there will be a physical manifestation of the success and happiness. It's absolutely going to happen for you. And I feel like you're creating the flower. And that may be a good way for you to get more in touch with this artistic self that's been repressed. You need to start drawing the flower or writing about the flower. What would this cosmic flower look like? What is a cosmic flower? What is it? What kind of frequency does it have? What does it sound like? What does it look like? Better yet, what does it feel like? Imagine yourself holding this cosmic flower and imagine the power of the energy blooming within you. Take the cosmic flower within your heart chakra and allow it to nurture self-love and growth. Universal love is here for you. And I think for a lot of you guys, you're going to connect more deeply with universal love through your artistic expression. Okay? All right. We have alchemy. Okay, that is what's going on here. When we get into the place where we're no longer in denial of self, when we get into the place where we're no longer um, in repressive thoughts and we are aware of them, first comes awareness, okay? And I feel like that's where we need to be. That's where you need to be. 
Be aware of the repression. Become and ask for help. Your future self is one of your guides, okay? Your higher self is one of your guides. Um, the future self is multidimensional, okay? And I feel like they want you to know that if you ask for awareness of your mental state of the blocks, they will bring it forward for you. And it will happen relatively quickly uh, because I feel like once you're aware that you're blocking yourself with these thoughts that feel like a program running in your brain, okay? Once you're able to become aware, you can powerfully not only block it, but transmute those thoughts. You can heal the thought program in your brain where you're no longer thinking of, my art is not worth anything. I'm not that talented. I need to be more logical. I need to be an accountant. I don't need to be an artist. And in your mind, you're going to see that they're related, like you can use numbers to make art. You can use science to make art. You can apply your logic to your creative mind. And what happens is you can use that logic to build your skill level very quickly because you're intelligent. You're intuitively intelligent. Okay. This is a whole other level of intelligence that we don't really talk about much. It's beyond emotional intelligence. It's an intelligence that you feel. Uh, you may have that. You may have a little bit of that brain um, I don't want to say syndrome, brain state where you feel color, you feel numbers, you feel things. That's kind of what I'm talking about. It's, it's a place where you feel intelligence and you can apply that intelligence that you feel into your art. Now, if you aren't aware of that, you could ask for the awareness. All you got to do is ask. Nothing is going to be inflicted or pushed upon you, okay? You must ask for assistance from the universe if you want this to flower for you, okay? All right, I'm going to get one more of these, and we have third eye chakra. This is powerful. Um, you can really, by working on your third eye, you're going to be able to open up that creative portal within you, and it's going to be so strong. Many of you guys are going to dream about the art you've made. Some of you guys were in Pompeii, and you created the... Um, uh, the mosaics on the walls of the different temples and holy rooms. A lot of you guys created uh, furniture, holy furniture though. This was furniture for like um, cardinals and uh, priestesses and it's different religions, it's different places. Some of you guys are connected to the ancient Antarctica. This may get a little controversial. The Antarctica before it was frozen. Okay, there's a whole um, new reality and awareness of that timeline coming forward. Okay, you may feel very, very old. You are an ancient, ancient, ancient soul. And I just feel like what happened is this matrix we live in, this false reality that we live in, the programming is so powerful. It's in everything. It's from the moment you're born. It's from the moment you, you eat your first food, when you go to school. It's a constant just um, energy of control, of suppression, of repression. You may have felt when you went to school or someplace in your life that, you know, they really didn't teach art very much and uh, they didn't really value it. And the reason why, uh, as a society, we have thrown that away is that the people in positions of quote-unquote power know that the more connected to your creative, artistic self you are, the more truth you know, the more you're connected to universal love and become aware that there's something wrong with this reality. Okay, so it, it is a conscious choice by the programming here, the people in positions of power who have, uh, I want to use the word inflicted, but I, I don't think that's a proper word, but uh, have placed these serious levels of control on this reality. You're going to become aware of it and it may unnerve you. Take time with it. Okay. Understand that as you build through the awarenesses, you're building this cosmic flowers, energetic, uh, explosion. I'm, th I'm seeing the word enlightenment coming for you. You're going to have a very enlightening moment. You're going to understand the power of your third eye chakra. For some of you guys, you need to work on your third eye. You may need to decalcify your penile gland, your pineal gland, however you say it, you guys. <laughs> but you need to work on that. That It's in your... Um, it's in the middle of your brain, and uh, many of you guys probably already know this, so you're going to remember. The Egyptian's Eye of Horus has to do with, um, is it the Eye of Horus? I can't, I'm, I'm, uh, it's really that area, I'm picking up on your energy. That area is very, your psychic memory is very 
very fuzzy and that's going to get crisper it's going to get more more clear but look into the third eye within your brain okay look into the science of it look into the artistic expression throughout time i'm feeling like egypt is a rich place for you to look at third eye artistry and third eye understanding they understood the third eye on a whole nother level a multi-dimensional level and many of their sculptures their uh temples, things like that, are built on a multi-dimensional plane, okay? Uh, and I feel like for you guys, the halls of Amante, Amente, uh, can be a rich place to help you reconnect with that or those lifetimes. I feel like many of you were reborn in the Egyptian pantheon. You were reborn within the Egyptian timeline. You were reborn over and over and over to help you get a thorough understanding of the way artistry and the third eye expresses itself through spirituality, science, and magic. Okay, wow, big, big, huge energy for you guys. Uh, and that's what I got for you. Group one, I hope this resonated. If it did or it didn't, please let me know down in the comments below. I really enjoyed reading for you, and I hope to see you guys in another video. Take care. Bye, guys. Hey, group two, all of you that selected magic, this is going to be your reading of the Akashic Records and a message from your future self. Um, I'm going to read this card for you guys first. We have the frequency of magic supports our intrinsic ability to grow and expand beyond the moment to move toward possibilities and expressions that are as grand and profound as we can imagine. All that is required is our belief in their manifestation. Beautiful energy. Now, keep in mind, it's a general reading. It's a general session. Take what resonates and leave the rest behind. Okay, straight off, I'm going to tell you your future self that's talking to me is a worker of magic. Okay, they've been a magician, and I mean spiritual, metaphysical, uh, psychic. This is someone with magical abilities, the ability to manifest uh, their magic into the world. Okay, this for some of you guys, I'm feeling like witchcraft, ancient, ancient witchcraft, high priestess, high priest. Um, this is someone who may have been a necromancer, may have worked in alchemy. When alchemy, I'm seeing like 1300s alchemist. Uh, this is someone who may have been involved in the underground stream in um, with hidden knowledge uh, that many of our quote unquote elite are using in a negative way to keep control of the populace. So um, it's going to be different for different people. If that does not resonate with you, then pick another group. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to go forward. Okay. We're looking into the Akashic records right now. I feel like for some of you guys, you may vibe with some of the more well-known magicians, uh, magic workers, witches, whatever, what have you. For some of you guys, you may be drawn to ritual magic, or you may do witchcraft and work a craft at the in that vein, okay? Uh, but I feel like this energy is coming forward for you. A lot of you guys uh, may be beginning your walk with uh, witchcraft or alternate alternative spirituality and maybe things have not manifested quite as quickly for you as you thought they should and uh, this energy this ascended magical being is coming forward I feel like for some of you guys you don't realize that on another plane of existence okay take what resonates here this is an Akashic reading so it's a little outside the box some of you guys are literally an incarnation of a magical type being Okay, uh, some of you guys may resonate with being angelic, uh, demonic. You may resonate with being like a god form or goddess form. Now, understand when we take on that energy to incarnate it, we're part of an oversoul of a god form, goddess form, that kind of thing. Uh, usually, those are very big and very massive. And within the human um, humanity, it will break apart into different parts. Okay, uh, so keep that in mind. All right. You may have been a high priest or high priestess that channeled this god form, goddess form, uh, magical creature, being, multidimensional self. Some of you guys uh, that, um, okay, Aleister Crowley had a energy come forward he called Iowasi or Iowasa. It's different for different people. You may have, and the reason why they're pointing this out is it has to do with magic. Um, you may resonate with having this kind of uh 
some people call it a guardian angel, but it, it's an entity that is like helps you throughout your lifetimes. It's a magical being, okay? Take what resonates here and leave the rest behind. Not everybody's going to resonate, resonate with that, and I know that to be true. Okay, we have add some. Okay. A lot of you guys are doubting the guidance you're getting from spirit because things haven't gone the way you want them to go. And it's because you are this master magician, master witch, master manifester, okay? Um, and you're so connected to this divine energy that you expect it because time outside of our dimension doesn't really exist. So, uh, you know, it's natural for you to expect it to appear when you say, because you understand the power in human words, okay? But unfortunately, we still work within the 3D paradigm. And within that, it takes time. You have to give things time to align in this reality. You have to give things time to change and alter. And it takes a while. And you know why it takes a while. Because not only do we have this time issue, we also have this outside, um, most of humanity doesn't realize that there's an outside group of people who are power hungry um, and their work has been validated by the power they have over the masses that creates more density here. So it takes a little bit longer to work through all the, the I'm seeing like, um, like thorns. There's a lot of thorny energy around you. It's almost like you're encased in it. Um, and this may be because outside of yourself, people have maybe doubted you or you've doubted yourself or maybe some, some things have misfired for you. And know that all of those misfires, all of that energy is to help you further refine your ability okay it's to help further refine your focus uh, for some of you guys you just need need to get control of that filter that's telling you that your guides aren't talking to you okay nobody's guiding you there's a, a sense of trying to shut down this magical operation that's going on within you uh, we have two worlds okay you are of two worlds two dimensions and many of you guys are aware of your multi-dimensional self and you just need to talk to it more you're aware of your future self around you you're aware of your higher self you're aware of these magical energies around you but sometimes you get discouraged and that is not because you've done anything. That's because you're human. Humans doubt themselves a lot because we live in a reality where this vibration, there's a vibration that manifests this table. And as humans on the other side, all we see is the table. We don't connect with the fact that underneath this table, the appearance of this table is a vibration, okay? I'm getting guidance from your future self um, who appears to me like Merlin. I'm not saying you were Merlin, but that's the form it's taking in my mental space. That you need to realize that everything is vibration and really get into that. Get into your own vibration. Go higher or deeper, if you will, and understand that the candle, the card, my voice, everything has a vibration. And as you understand more and more how to not do, just do the magic part, the ritual part, the crafting part, but underneath that is the energy, is the energetic exchange, the energetic manifestation, using physical objects to manifest into the world. So you have to infuse your energy. And what I'm hearing from this ascended self, this future self, is that you need to infuse more of your frequency, more of your vibration into the things you do, okay? And in order to do that, it would be probably the easiest way to really get into that is to go outside. A plant, a flower, uh, put your hands in the dirt, look at some birds, you know, uh, play with your dog, uh, hear the, play with your kids, you know, enjoy the nature of this reality, okay? It will help you. For some of you guys, you need to like get out in the water and swim. I see some of you guys swimming in a lake, that kind of thing. Uh, be safe, always be safe, please be safe. Um, we have balance here. So you're working on understanding more about your abilities, about your magical abilities. You absolutely have magical abilities. If that does not resonate with you, you need to pick another group, okay? Because this is a very magical group of people. Uh, many of you guys already are in magic. You already do it. So and we have Archangel Michael. So there's angelic frequencies around you or ascended frequencies if you don't care for the angelic terminology. But there's a lot of frequency moving. And what's happening is those thorny bushes around you are going to bloom. This is your blossom here, 
okay? This is your manifestation. As you realize that underneath, and this, this is transmutation, okay? This is how you transmute this thorny energy around you, is you understand that underneath the manifestation of the thorns, the issues, the struggles, the problems, uh, the depression, whatever this is, please seek help if you're having those kind of issues with depression and anxiety. Um, understand that there is a frequency there, and the frequency doesn't just create the thorn. It creates a flower. It creates a rose. Okay, and that rose can be any color. That flower doesn't have to be a rose. It can be any kind of rose. And once this blooms, the thorns fall off. They fall away. They dissipate. The thorns are turned into blooms. Okay, now how do you do that? You do that by understanding and walking into your power and understanding that just because the table is here doesn't mean you understand the frequency of this table. Okay, the table is an example. Okay, uh, like if you have a familiar or you have an animal in your life, um, a family pet or something, begin to, this is how you can learn more about frequency because I feel like you know about it, but there's a depth here that you need to really connect with. It will vastly improve the quality of your manifestations and your magic. As you begin to spend time with an animal, um, and that means you just have them beside you while you're watching television. Have them with you when you do magic, okay? Have them with you when you do your spiritual practice, when you're meditating. Spend more time with that energy. You will get intuitive hits from animals, okay? They will tell you how they're feeling. They'll tell you what they need. You're understanding them on a frequency level when you do that, when you allow and open yourself up to nature speaking to you. It doesn't have to be animals. It can be trees. It can be the wind. It can be water. But when we open up our awarenesses to the elements within our universe speaking to us, it begins to take us on a voyage of frequency. And we understand the power of frequency, the power it took to manifest this table, to manifest everything is incredible. And this is cosmic, energetic, super galactic power of manifestation. You begin to understand the vibration and frequency of this reality and how really malleable it is. It's very malleable. Once you understand that everything's in flow, everything's in frequency, even when we have these these huge oppressive energies around us, the one thing they cannot do is they cannot program frequency out of this reality. And we all have access to different frequencies within the reality, okay? Let's get some more cards here for you. Tell me more about group two and this magical energy they have. Okay, we have the garden. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's healing. It's, um, I feel like as you connect more with frequency around you, you're going to feel more at home here. Some of you guys, because you have this magical energy, some of you guys are literally incarnated magical beings. Humanity feels weird. It feels weird here. Everyone's weird. The way they treat each other, the food they eat, uh, the things they care about, it's all very weird. And it's really good for you to remember and have compassion for the normies. Okay, I know. I don't, I don't mean it that way, but I don't know how else to put it. The people who don't vibe with the deeper elements of this planet and being here, they don't understand what a gift it is. Um, and they can't see, so they're locked into this like NPC kind of behavior where they go to work, they make dinner, they go to bed, they start over. They don't think any deeper than how much this gas costs, which is an issue, don't get me wrong. But they don't really think about the energy behind that, that makes these ma big changes in the world. And what's happening is, as more people wake up, as more people wake up to their magical legacy, their magical uh, genealogy, uh, spiritual genealogy, uh, the more the energies become more oppressive. And that's why we're seeing all these really toxic moves just within our society. Uh, because there's another energy here that realizes we're waking up. Okay, we are waking up to reality. We're beginning to understand everything is frequency. Everything is flow. And as magical beings, we understand that we have access to this. And with that, we can change it. For many of you guys, you can open up timelines. Okay, you have an ability to alter timelines to help with the grid structure. Uh, there's a crystal kind of spiritual grid structure around the planet. And many of us have been working in that grid structure. What's happened is... 
as we begin to really work in it and move it and lock it into place, the energy is like, I almost feel like um, these uh, beacons have gone off within this other energy, the, the controlling energy saying, oh no, they were not supposed to wake up. Now what are we going to do? And they start to, um, to compress on this new spiritual crystal awareness, crystal, crystal reality, okay? Um, and it can, it can feel very uh, suffocating, um, but if you understand frequency, then you know it's very easy to push back because what they are basing their control on is empty. It's fallacy. It doesn't have any merit. And once humanity wakes up to that, everything's going to change. And we're on the threshold of that. We really are. But we're not quite there yet. And I feel like there's a lot of healing energy around you with the energy of transmutation. I think as you see the thorns begin to, to fall away, the problems, the obstacles, the blocks, the suppressing energies around you. And some of you guys, you have thorny people around you. You have toxic people around you that need to be released. And your uh, higher self, your future self is coming forward and saying, you need to really ask for help to release. This. I feel like for some of you, this is like a really toxic either family or friend or partner. This is someone who has kept you locked in place. And that's part of why your manifestations aren't blossoming because there is an energy here that on some level, for some of you guys, it's on a higher level, uh, a different level. They are uh, working to suppress it and they don't really realize it because they are not as awake as you are. They're not as magical. A lot of you guys have a partner who's completely not interested in this stuff at all, or you have people in your life who know maybe you've been outed as a witch or something like that, and they really don't approve, and that non-approval can create, you know, thorny kind of energies. I used to call these like prickly energies, like prickly, um, I, I forgot the name, prickly pears or something like that, where they just come in and cause conflict. It's an energy of conflict, of that someone so lost in uh, repression and subjugation and limitation that they cannot hold space for the fact that this is your expression in the world. This is your religion. This is something that may be very meaningful to you and they work against you. And for many of you guys, you need to get space. I'm not saying that you need to completely release them, but you need to get space from them. And a lot of your guys are concerned. They're concerned that you won't do this because you feel such love for them and compassion. You feel such connection. But the truth is what you're connected Connecting with is lowering your frequency, okay? That won't resonate for everyone, so take what resonates here. Okay, let's get some more energy. Okay, we have the sands of time. Yes, you're working in the energy of time. And many of you guys are going to realize that because you can do, like, timeline work, um, you can work in this artificial structure of time and work outside of it, you're going to see that your timeline changes. You guys are about to change your timeline through magic. Maybe you already have, but you aren't, aren't really aware of it. This time you're going to do it consciously. And how do you do that? Well, you need to start thinking, and this really works well if you are out in nature and really connecting with the flow and frequency of everything living around you, uh, like the grass, the trees, things like that, water, whatever works for you. And you begin to really imagine and give yourself a, a uh, artist tool to kind of say, this is the timeline I want to see. This is what I want to align for me. This is how I want it to be. You need to script it, draw it, talk about it, whatever it is, okay? it's You need to go ahead. Your throat chakra is about self-expression. And when you do artistic things, when you do visionary things, it's part of that throat chakra energy. And I'm feeling like you guys need to leave your use your throat chakra and your third eye to help Bring your vision of the life you want, the timeline you want in your life. And also consider how the timeline affects your, the, the, the family. I want to say the family, but I mean the planet. But your entire family is here on the planet, um, whether they be in the dimension of the in-between here in this reality or they're actually on the planet. For many of you guys, there's a bigger brotherhood, sisterhood, familyhood with your human people okay with the people of the planet i feel you have big magical energy you may actually feel more um 
connected when you connect with the life force of Gaia, the chi. Um, because some of you guys have been like universes, like literally universes that people fly spaceships through, okay? Universes that birth planets, that birth animals, that birth beings. Like, it's a big energy. And I know that's a lot to take in, but, you know, this is an Akashic reading. And Akashic readings can be like this. They can be very outside the box because as humans, we limit our reality. And what you need to learn and what you need to walk into being comfortable with is releasing the need to limit release some of these rules some of you guys are really confined by maybe a magical practice that has limited what you can do what you can't do it's time to listen to your intuitive voice the intuitive magic within you will tell you what's for you and what's not many of you guys are in some kind of more strict magical practice and your higher future self is coming forward to tell you that it's time to release some of the rules and see what happens because some of those rules are it's repressing your magical ability okay we have we have another angel archangel gabriel okay there is help coming for you and this is your spirit team this is your ancestors your angels i feel like for some of you guys this is literally like uh your alien self coming forward so i'm gonna get the cards that i have here yeah Okay, we're going to draw from the Mystic Martian Oracle because I feel like your future self, this is really a future self. This is your alien ancestry um, and your alien future coming forward and they want to talk to you because what we call magic here on this planet is science in other places in different universes okay uh, different labels for the same thing um you may be drawn to quantum physics as well we have alchemy the philosopher's stone you're an alchemist okay you've been an alchemist and in the future your future self is this alchemist okay this alchemy energy, this eye here, the eye of knowing, the eye of watching, the eye of consciousness. I think you guys need to get more into your universal consciousness. You need to uh, work on, like, through meditations, expanding your gateway. Uh, I have been working the gateway experience meditations, and I, I have to say, I feel like for this group, you guys might really find a lot of value in that experience. It's very conscious expansion um, in a major way. It's very... It's big. I'm trying to explain something that's very difficult to put into words, but many of you guys know what I'm saying. It helps you release a lot of the uh, toxin in your body, and you don't realize you're doing it, but there's a lot of breath interaction. You learn how to transmute in a very simple way. Um, and what happens as you work the gateway, or at least for me, and I think this probably would be for you, you will find that your visionary state expands. Your consciousness begins to grow. You heal a lot of your blocks. You understand that the thorns are going to change into flowers. It is inevitable. It is the way it works for you, okay? So you are an alchemist at your heart, all right? You know how to do this intuitively, and that is why they want you to get out of the uh, the projected thoughts of any kind of system you're working, magical system, whatnot. I'm not saying to not do them. I'm just saying to start releasing it to where you can expand your consciousness and understanding of frequency um, and manifestation. Okay, we have crop circles, messages, curiosity, and signs. Okay, there are many signs coming forward for you. Um, and you're going to see them on a regular basis. In fact, you may already see numbers on a regular basis. You are, may already see signs. But the signs that are coming for you are going to be more specific. It's going to validate this new pathway you're opening up. Because I feel like literally you're opening up a new timeline. By releasing constraints, by understanding that all humans doubt, it's, it doesn't make you uh, not a powerful witch or not a powerful manifester. It doesn't, that's not the issue. The issue is not allowing yourself the freedom to go where your curiosity guides you. Because there may be another paradigm that you need to work in that will bring about your manifestation more clearly uh, and meditation can help you with that for you guys i feel like meditating by water i'm seeing like i'm literally seeing a being floating above the water for some of you guys you need to be immersed in springtime springtime it's going to be very powerful for you spring into summer and meditate outside you know under the stars some of you guys need to get more comfortable with your your alien self with your multi-dimensional self that you are more than what we see you are more than the vessel you wear 
okay? You are so much more than that. And I think you know this, but you need to embrace that. And there's a need here to like be okay with your weirdness, be okay with your strangeness, because being a magical creature, having an aspect of self that identifies as a magical creature is a very unusual experience. Not all people feel this, okay? Some of you guys do, and some of you don't. Some of you guys are like, okay, Amy, you jumped the shark. Okay. But for others, you do resonate with this. And if you do, then this part of the reading is for you. You know, when I talk about the magical creatures, it's for you. If you don't resonate with it, then listen to the rest of it, okay? Because the rest of it's for you then. But if you don't resonate with the magical frequency, then it's not for you at all, kind of thing. All right. Okay. One more here. We have the Neph... Nephilim, Controversy Assessing New Perspectives. Okay, you guys. All right, so you've heard the stories about the giants, right? The, um, those who have, uh, supposedly spiritual fallen angels, whatever, that have, uh, bred with human women, that whole thing. And let's remove the religious paradigm from that, okay? So what we're talking about in an element of alchemy is we're talking about spirit and matter coming together and making another being. Okay, that is in essence is what I'm feeling with you. And because you are spirit and matter, and not only are you spirit, but you're an ascended form of spirit. Okay, let's just go with that energy. You can really manipulate your universe, your environment very powerfully and create a third energy, which would be this kind of energy. And it's big, it's giant. It's a giant energy, and it makes major impacts on the world. And you don't have to be in front saying, hey, I did that, because I feel like a lot of you guys are like, I don't want to be where people can see me. Like, I don't want people to know. Do this behind the lines, okay? I feel like I almost i am seeing like a battlefield, and then we have the soldiers on the front lines, and then we have these powerful energies in the back that are making huge moves energetically. They're telling where the soldiers to put their energy and I feel like that's you in the back here you're like I don't want to be photographed I don't want to be known but I want to help and what I'm feeling for you guys as you move more into this energy this alchemy um, I feel like you're going to be healing the masses you are a generational healer what does that mean well it can mean a couple things you heal your own generations but for you guys this magical entity that by the way was invited to come here, uh, you have been tasked with or asked to come in and heal generations of humanity, okay? And you made an agreement where you didn't necessarily have to be on the front lines. You didn't have to be seen or known. You could do this from behind the lines, okay? So you were able to live a normal normal human existence, okay? And because of that, there's a little bit of energy here of being bogged down in the process and not connecting with the magical element within you. And I feel like it's time for you to connect with that magical element within you on the level of frequency, okay? Uh, your, your future self is really they really want to emphasize this, that, that the answer to a lot of your issues is being more in tune with frequency, okay? It's really going to help you blossom and really walk in the power of incarnating in this magical being, of bringing that energy through to help humanity. It's going to help you. I feel I'm seeing like a a board, like a whiteboard, and I see someone writing hieroglyphics and I'm writing different different signs. It could be a chalkboard. And I feel like those those symbols, for some of you guys, sigil magic is going to be very, very powerful for you. As you write your sigils or whatever this magical writing is, understand that when you write it, you're writing it on a magical level, in a multi-dimensional space. It's not just the literal writing on the paper or the brown sack, whatever it is. It is literally that when you put pen to paper, you are writing in another dimension, okay? And you're pulling the energy through into this reality through that expression, okay? All right, group two, that's what I got for you. I hope this resonated. If it did or it didn't, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. I hope you have a most beautiful day, and I'll see you beautiful magical creatures next time. Bye, guys. Hey, group three, all of you that selected Miracle. 
33. This is going to be your reading uh, a message from your future self. We're going to be looking at your Akashic records. So this is going to be really interesting reading. I just want to say right off the bat, I feel like you guys need a miracle. Uh, you may feel like you need a miracle, like something needs to happen because things are not going well in your life. If you don't resonate with that, then this message may not be for you. Uh, there could be messages still in there, but I feel like you guys have been actively like praying or working on manifesting some kind of miracle. What other people would see as miraculous if they knew the truth about your life, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read this card. We have the frequency of miracle supports our belief in ourselves as a part of source and therefore our belief that anything is possible. And I feel like uh, there are odds stacked against you. Okay, and I think you know this um, on a, a deeper level. I'm re doing your reading a little bit different than the other two, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to be opening up with the uh, Star Man Tarot. This is one of the oldest decks that I have. It has a lot of magical codes in it and um, a lot of frequencies. So let's get into this miracle. Um, I feel like you guys are feeling a lot of lack right now. Maybe you've had a financial situation kind of not go well or go the way you want. Uh, maybe you're seeing some progress, but not enough to get you where you need to be. I feel like this group has a lot of major obstacles. You may feel called to more than one group, okay? Uh, because this is a very specific message about the miracles that you're manifesting in your life. And first of all, what I'm hearing from your future self is that you need to understand that the miracle works through you. It's not something that happens to you. Okay, let's say it again. The miracle, the miraculous works through you. It's not something that happens to you. You have to take on the energy of the miracle, the miraculous. And I know that's, that's hard to do when you're in a state where you, you're not feeling great. Your life is overwhelming. There's a lot of financial obstacles or interpersonal obstacles. But what it really is, it's, it's not saying you don't have like, dense things going on. It's saying, okay, I feel the density, but I'm also going to connect to the power of hope. Hope is the essence of what helps a phoenix reignite. Okay, hope, the hope they can do that, the hope they can fly again, the hope that they can reemerge. You guys may uh, vibe with the phoenix uh, reading that I just did, the phoenix sessions. Um, for some of you, I'm feeling number three on that one as well, but just take what resonates here, okay? Some of you guys have been baby stepping your way, and it's, you've got some results. You know, things have, you know, you've gotten some insight, you've grown, but there is a major miracle you're needing to come through. And a lot of you guys have been praying, you've been working at it. This is something that you put energy into. If you haven't put it, put energy into it in a proactive way, you've put a lot of mental focus on it. You've thought about it. This may be something that some of you guys have really, you know, um, like gone out in your garage and smoked a cigarette and thought about it kind of thing, like ruminated on it. Um, and what I'm getting here, it's really important that instead of ruminating or thinking about overanalyzing how it can't work, how how in a place of stagnation you are, begin to open up a window of hope. It doesn't mean that you don't, you know, we all have negative emotions. It's part of being human. But it's important to open the window of possibility for yourself. If you're really pulling for a miracle, you have to open up to the fact that a miracle can really happen. They happen every day. I'm a living miracle. My life is a testimony to the power of, uh, of shadow work and dedication and determination and the power of, of uh, my, pat my matron goddess, uh, Lilith. You know, she really helped me get to a place where I don't think I could have achieved it without her inner guidance. So just take what resonates here. Okay, now let's pull some cards, shall we? Okay. Let me try to shuffle these up. I'm going to get five cards. Tell me more about the situation. Give me insight, future self of group three. Tell me more. What do they need to know about this? Okay, we have eight of wands. It's coming quicker than you think. There's a lot... A lot of you guys have put a lot of energy into this. You may actually, it may be a job you're working at. You're trying to get a promotion. Maybe you're trying to save your house. Maybe you're trying to make money. Maybe you're, you're trying to heal yourself. Maybe you're trying to heal relationships, whatever this is. There's a lot of energy that has 
has been scattered. It's now going to come together for you as you begin to focus on this window, the light of hope. Okay, it's important that you just open a window, a side door to hope and allow that to grow. It will help you go from the scattered energy to pinpoint accuracy of this miracle. Okay, and remember, miracles don't often look like exactly how we see them in our mind because we all have this internal universe. Okay, and for you guys, I feel like there are people, places, and things that need to be shuffled around. So the actual manifestation may look a little different, okay? But it doesn't mean it's less than a miracle. It's, it just means that the way it manifested in the world is the universe, your guides, your angels, whatever this energy is around you, have used the energy around you to make this happen, to allow it to happen, to help you focus and work towards it. Some of you guys need to get on the action. You need to go all in, okay? If this is a miracle you need from some kind of career change or business, because I feel like for some of you guys, this is financial. This is something you need to materialize for you. I feel like you just need to get more focused and you need to work at it. You know, if you've been thinking about starting a business, you need to, to look in all the equipment you need. You need to start researching. You need to start putting your time and effort into it. And um, I can remember this from another reading I did. This was like... a. a maybe a couple of years ago, um, where it's very important that you start to investigate the realms of, of possibility with this open window, okay? How you can manifest it, how you can make it happen. There are still going to be steps you have to take. It doesn't mean this miracle will just explode right away. Uh, you have to align with it, okay? And you're energetically getting aligned with it. And many, many wise people will tell you that you can't manifest something that you're not energetically aligned with. That doesn't mean you don't have doubt, okay? That's part of our primal nature. That's part of being human because we live in a material world. But it's important to always open the window of hope. For you guys, having hope is going to help you create this miracle, okay? And the miracle is working through you, okay? I, I really need to bring that home. It's not something that's going to come from the universe outside of you. It's going to work through you. Okay, let's get this card here. We have the Queen of Wands. And see the sunflower above her head? And that's energy, not gender. See that? Do you see the connection here with these, just these three cards? The circle, circle of light. This is light. This is a sunflower. This is a physical manifestation from this Queen of Wands energy. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about this Queen of Wands energy. You need to be more at, at home with who you are and your abilities. You need to believe in yourself. You need to know that you're capable of this, and this is for you. This miracle is custom made for you at the moment where you need it. I feel like a lot of you may start to get a windfall, like money kind of coming out of nowhere, like checks you didn't expect, or, you know, maybe someone buys your your products and you didn't expect it or you know maybe you get a little raise here you get a little pat on the back you get validation about the things you're trying to manifest as you work on it and you focus on the hope and you lean into it lean into the hope and it will help you manifest the sunflower for many of you guys the sunflower is going to be a sign um, that your manifestation is coming Okay, because uh, it is, it is. The Eight of Wands is rapid alignment normally. Uh, for you, I'm feeling rapid alignment for some, for others. This is really refining your energy, okay? This one came out too. This is the King of Pentacles. Okay, that's material success here. And what I'm hearing from your guides, from this future self, I'm feeling like this pentacle is this energy, okay? See it manifesting. This is the course of manifestation. Okay, focus, signs. And boom, there it is. There's your pinnacle. Focus, signs, manifestation, okay? And King of Pentacles is abundant. King of Pentacles is healing. King of Pentacles is wealthy. Uh, success as far as business goes as well. A very smart um strategic. I'm feeling like you need to be strategic as you focus your energy on this window of hope. Okay, so what I'm getting now is how do I get to the hope part, though? How do I get there? Well, you know, you have to realize that, first of all, don't judge yourself for having negative thoughts. Don't have your, don't judge yourself for block, for, uh, for these thoughts that may be blocking, okay? It's part of being human. Once you really understand that, that's our primal brain. 
That's just how we work. What we see, our primal brain, what it sees is what is, okay? But you are more than a primal self. You're a spiritual self as well. And so you can feel your way. And you need to lean into that. You need to lean into the intuitive uh, information that comes forward. Because I feel like for a lot of you guys, you aren't listening to that. Because all you see is the continued problems and obstacles and things you can't overcome. Instead of listening to the inner voice. Some of you guys need to get quiet. You need to meditate or do a meditative practice. Uh, meditation can be washing dishes or taking a walk. It doesn't have to be that you sit on the ground, you cross your legs and hope for the best kind of thing. Some of you guys may work really well with affirmations or uh, guided meditations, but it's really important to get control of the primal brain and understand that, you know, that's programming, it's part of being human, and as we can get control of it, we can understand when it pops up, we can ask for the awareness of when it pops up, when we're limiting ourselves and not, it's almost like what happens is we're not able to see the the blinder being put up in front of the light of hope like we can't see it because all we see is the block is the obstacle and instead of using your primal sight use your spiritual sight use your psychic gifts you guys are psychic you're empathic and a lot of you are in denial of it and that's what's blocking this this miracle, this manifestation, this wonderful thing is meant for you. Your future, your future self is over. I see like a cheerleader. They're cheerleading you, okay? They are talking to you. Just tell them, hey, I want your insight on what's going on. Higher self, future self, whatever this is, okay? I, please tell me how I can focus more on hope. How can I get past the obstacle? Understand you're not getting past it necessarily, but you're energetically seeing through it. It's a completely different kind of way of approaching an issue. Instead of denying or judging ourselves for feeling doubt, we say, I feel the doubt. I understand the doubt. But I also know on the other side of that doubt is that thing I want. On the other side of fear is that thing that I'm trying to manifest. And I need to use my gifts and abilities to not only see through the obstacle, but connect with the hope. That on the other side of that obstacle is that thing manifested already. I just got to move through this dens density. I got to move through this energy. Okay. All right. Let's get a few more cards here for you guys. Tell me more. Okay. And we have the chariot. Okay. This is about balance. All right. We also have this energetic activation. I feel like for you guys, you're going to have a crown chakra activation. It's going to really help you. A lot of you guys this is going to come through uh, getting control of that filter, uh, doing whatever meditative uh, state. For some of you guys, it's drawing, like drawing and art, getting into something repetitive, um, something that you can do without a lot of thought, if that makes sense. It's almost like you give your thoughts release to be expressed, okay? That could be through music. It's different for different people. But I feel like there is an energetic activation coming for you, and your future self wants you to know your crown chakra is going to be more connected to the etheric. You're going to feel more connected to angels, guides, your future self, your higher self, whatever this is, because they're going to help you align more with hope. Okay, instead of being scattered like I feel in this card, this activation is going to help you align and shoot straight toward that window of hope. And then you're going to get your signs here. You're going to get your sunflower. You're going to get other signs, owls, ravens. For some of you guys, it's money. You're going to get validated by money, okay, and opportunity. It's going to be different for different people, though. So let's get, you know what, I'm feeling this one, so let's take it. Okay, we have the Queen of Swords, okay. You are going to get clarity about these signs, okay. When you get a sign because of the work you do, the energetic work you're doing, when you get one, you're going to feel it. You're going to embrace it. And here's a little secret about signs, okay. Signs are energetic activations, Okay, when you see a sign or you feel a sign and you take it deep within and you allow the energy of the validation to come forward, it takes you to the next level of manifestation because you know what you're doing is working. Okay, so, you know, you're aligned, you're seeing signs, and boom, you have your manifestation. Okay, tell me more. Tell me more. Woo! Well, we had a few cards pop out. You know what? I'm going to take them. We have the Prince of Cups, an offer coming towards you. Okay, this is your manifestation being presented to you on a platter. Okay, on the platter. And what I get with the skulls as the platter, this is manifestation. 
Okay, a skull is like a person, a being, a 3D object coming in and offering you uh, a job, more money, more possibility, um, healing as well. This is wish fulfillment, okay? We have the Ten of Cups, happiness, fulfillment, possibility, being born through this process, your miracle coming to play, fulfillment, joy. This may be healing of your family. I feel like your cups runneth over. This is a lot of different opportunities. We have how many cups here? One, two, three. We have ten, actually. Um, but I'm feeling like specific miracles coming through for specific people, okay? For some of you guys, you're seeking a miracle that has to do with a child or a loved one. For some of you guys, it has to do with a marriage or a partnership for others this is a miracle about money things and possibility whatever this is it's going to flower for you here is that symbol we keep having the circle appear and now energetically it's taken flight these are wings the circle has actually become wings and we have the flower of manifestation here beautiful energy you're energetically going to get what you are, are seeking we have the three of pentacles here and the ten of swords okay so what is this what are we doing here with the ten of swords we are releasing the things that don't work for us we're releasing thoughts we're releasing people that don't work for us for a lot of you guys you have someone around you that you need to be I don't want to say done with, okay, but you need to release. And you're going to be releasing a lot of the doubt, a lot of the negative thoughts. Um, and not releasing them as in you'll never happen. Uh, you'll never think about them. Sorry, you'll never think of them. But you're releasing them in the fact that you accept that negativity is part of the human experience. And instead of judging yourself for it, you're going to be moving forward. Then we have the three of pentacles here. For some of you guys, you have someone you work with or someone who thinks whatever this is you're trying to manifest, whatever you're putting your energy in, isn't going to manifest for you. And what I'm seeing is basically this is somebody or a group of people or a family or something that don't believe in you. Maybe you're working in a job where people don't really believe in you or they don't see your talent. Um, it could be people around you as well, but know that you're going to be balancing this out, okay? You're perfecting this. You're working on it. Um, the Three of Pentacles can be about apprenticeship, but I also feel with this Three of Pentacles that, that there's energetically, there are energies already around you watching you do this. They're watching you take this Ten of Swords and understand what you need to let go, understand how you work, how it's going to manifest, and balancing out all the negative and the positive within your life. You're going to be walking the middle way, which is in balance and understanding the power of the physical and the power of the spiritual, okay? This is someone who is releasing a lot of negative thought, okay? All right, let's get into some more messages here. I'm feeling guided to go to the angel, ask the angels oracle deck. I haven't pulled from this for anybody, so, and I feel like you guys, some of you guys are really in need of a miracle. Uh, you feel like you're running out of time. You are not running out of time. Okay, I'm going to get this one. We have a yes. You are not running out of time. You have enough time. It's going to happen for you. Okay, energetically, spiritually, this is going to flower for you, but you must believe it. Okay, you must own it. Even if you doubt it right now, you must give yourself a window of possibility that this could happen for you. If you aren't able to do that, then it can't flower. It can't manifest for you. Uh, it doesn't mean you know how it's going to happen or how it's going to unfold. You don't have to know all the steps right now. All you have to feel is the window of possibility opening for you. Okay, I'm feeling, well, they, they're giving me this one. We have opportunity. Opportunity is coming for you, okay? It is, but you have, yes, opportunity. You have to own this. You have to. I feel like your future self is just really like cheerleading, like, yes, it's coming for you. You're going to get what you want. You're going to get your manifestation, but you have to go for it, and you have to put your heart and soul into it and understand that along the way, this may be a longer journey than what you think. There may be more uh, small obstacles you have to overcome. You're going to have to be patient, and you're going to have to have endurance. You're going to have to be determined. When people around around you uh, disapprove or poo-poo your idea or whatever, when things aren't moving exactly how you want to, you have to stay focused on being determined to see it flower, okay? It doesn't mean that you don't have moments where you doubt. Do not judge the outcome, sorry, do not judge the outcome by how you feel, okay? Like when you have negativity, all right? Um, understand that when you're feeling that, that's part of being human, 
okay? And if you can do that, a lot of times those negative emotions lose their power and they're put in their proper place. And then you have more room for hope, hopeful energy. Okay, and we have in the near future, boom. Okay, so you're going to have more signs in the near future that this is going to be, uh, this is going to be manifesting for you. Expect them. Expect them. I'm seeing uh, a future self here with their finger saying, you better expect them, okay? Because this, signs for you are a major part of your manifestation process, okay? And you want to get to the point where you're seeing signs so regularly that they're just an everyday part of your life. What does that mean? That means the frequency of your life has to begin to meet with that miracle. It's begin to meet with that manifestation. And the universe is starting to talk to you. They're starting to show you that yes, it's happening. Yes, what you're thinking is right. Yes, what you did is right. Your movements are good. This is what you should be doing. You're going to get those powerful signs. And then before you know it, you're going to start having money, resources, opportunities, people, places, and things manifest for you that's going to help validate the process you've been through. Okay? All right, group three, that's what I got for you. I hope this resonated. If it did or it didn't, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you guys. I hope you have a most beautiful day, and I'll see you beautiful magical creatures next time. Bye, guys.